What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released the RC or release candidate build of iOS 15.1 to both registered developers and public beta testers shortly after their unleashed event where they unveiled the new MacBook Pros, AirPods 3 and more. And shout out to everybody who joined me in that live stream earlier today. It was a ton of fun as usual. But anyways, in addition to this iOS 15.1 RC release, we also got iPadOS 15.1 RC, watchOS 8.1 RC, tvOS 15.1 RC, and also the RC build of macOS Monterey, finally. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and what's new in this RC build, along with the official release date for iOS 15.1 and macOS Monterey, and more. So starting off with the size of this update, you can see here it came in at 5.26 gigabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Of course, the size will be very large when you go from a beta to a final release or an RC build. So it's going to be a pretty large size regardless of the device you're on. If we go ahead and check out the build number, let's go to our settings, general about 15.1. We can see the build number here is 19B74, and that will likely be the build number of the final release as well. And if we go down to the modem firmware, that is unchanged from beta four. So it remains at 1.15.02. So if you're having connectivity issues, those unfortunately might still be remaining after updating. Now, I did also wanna mention that if you wanna stop receiving these beta updates and you just wanna get the public updates from now on, all you have to do is delete your beta profile. So if you go to your settings and then go to general and then go down to VPN and device management, if you tap on that, and then under configuration profile, you should see where it says iOS 15 beta software profile, tap on that. And then from here, you can remove your beta profile. That way you will not be getting any more beta updates in the future, you will only get the final public releases that everybody else gets. And of course, if you wanted to reinstall the beta profile and test out betas in the future, you could always do that. It's not permanent if you delete the profile. So just wanted to point that out. But anyways, what's new here in this RC build? And there's nothing new. Nothing has been changed since beta four, which came out last week, at least not that I've noticed. I didn't notice any new splash screens, no new settings, no universal control on the iPad, nothing. So it looks like it's just going to be bug fixes leading up to the release of iOS 15.1, which of course, 15.1 is going to bring a lot of nice features. The big one, of course, is going to be SharePlay. So SharePlay for FaceTime is finally coming back with iOS 15.1. This was removed in the beta stages of iOS 15.0 because it was very buggy and it just was not ready for prime time. But now SharePlay is coming back where you can watch movies and listen to you know, music with your friends at the same time. You can also share your screen with somebody. That's all part of SharePlay, and that will be coming with 15.1. We also have changes inside of the camera application for the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. So you can see up top, we do have ProRes video. So we can now shoot in ProRes natively on the Pro models of the iPhone 13s. And then we also have a new toggle inside of our camera settings. So if we go down to the bottom, we have auto macro. So it says automatically switch to the ultra wide camera to capture macro photos and videos. So now you get the option to turn that off if you want to, whereas before it would just automatically switch to that macro shot when you got close to an object. And then also if you go up here to formats, you can see that we have the ProRes toggle here inside of settings as well. And it also tells you how much space everything will take up. So it's still at six gigabytes per minute for 4K video, which is just insane, a ton of space these ProRes videos take up, but the quality is pretty impressive. And of course, there are a few other changes in this update as well, but I don't want to just keep repeating myself, so I'm gonna cover those in my What's New video for 15.1, which is coming next week. We'll talk about the exact release date later on in this video. But I did also wanna cover some bugs that are still remaining here after the iOS 15.1 RC release. And the first one is a big one. It is the storage bug. So people are still having the issue with the storage bug. And it looks like I am now too. So this is the first time I'm actually seeing this. So take a look at this up top. It shows that I'm only using 32 gigabytes of space when I know I'm using a lot more than that. I mean, look down here. I'm using much more than 32 gigabytes. I mean, my photos alone is more than double that. So the storage is off up top. Some people it actually shows zero kilobytes out of 256 gigabytes used. Mine's not as bad, but it's still inaccurate. So that is still a bug 
on the RC build, unfortunately. Now the bug where it showed the storage almost full on the main settings page, that was fixed but we still don't have a fix for the inaccurate storage number. And then I did also test the handoff to HomePod feature and just air playing to my HomePod as well. And it still freezes my music application, which is really annoying and just really weird. So that is still not fixed as of 15.1. Some people are also seeing an issue with notifications overlapping in their notification center. I don't have that personally, but some people are still facing that. And then also a lot of people are facing issues with Siri. So Siri sometimes will not you know, have the same voice throughout. So it will switch voices. Like if you have your Siri voice set to, let me just go into my Siri and search right here. So if you have it set to like voice two, it may, you know, speak in the default Siri voice. Sometimes it'll just switch back and forth between a new Siri voice and the old Siri voice that we've known for a while. So very inaccurate when it comes to Siri. Also, some people are saying that it doesn't read their emails or tell battery percentage of the AirPods anymore. It just seems like some of the functionality is either just not there anymore or just not working on iOS 15.1. And if we take a look at the release notes for 15.1 RC, we can see some remaining issues here. So there's only one resolved issue. So the issue with voiceover was resolved with this RC build. So alarms now activate correctly in the clock app. So those were broken before in beta four, but that has been fixed in the RC. However, we still have multiple known issues. So the big one right here is with the phone app. So it says users might experience loss of audio during calls, followed by the call being dropped in some conditions. So that is still remaining something to keep in mind. And then also a couple of home issues there as well. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels very smooth here on the RC build, but I don't really see there being much of a difference from the fourth beta to this RC build. However, if you're on 15.0.2, it is going to run better and smoother in terms of performance. So we have less bugs and just the overall OS just feels quicker. And if you check out the Geekbench scores, you can see here, I did score pretty high on the Geekbench. So we got a 1743 on the single core and a 4869 on the multi-core. So you can see the comparison there to beta four higher in both the single core and the multi-core, which is always a good sign for an RC build. And as far as battery life goes, battery life on beta four was great. So I'd expect things to remain the same here with the RC build. It could possibly get better, but I would not expect any change when it comes to battery life, which is a good thing because it's good for most people. All right, so what's next for Apple? When can we expect to see the final release of 15.1? And that is coming next week, most likely on the 25th. And the reason I say that is because Apple confirmed that macOS Monterey is coming on October 25th, right before the new Macs release on the 26th. Now, there is the possibility that iOS 15.1 gets released later this week. So that is a possibility, or it could even come later next week. It's really hard to say right now, but we do know for sure that macOS Monterey is coming on the 25th. And then after iOS 15.1 gets released to the public, I would not be surprised to see a 15.2 beta one get seeded out shortly after. And again, if you don't want to continue beta testing, just remove your beta profile like I showed you earlier in this video, and then you will only get the public releases. And then finally, I did want to give you guys a quick recap of all of the new products announced at Apple's Unleashed event earlier today. So the first one is the AirPods 3. So we did get the announcement of the AirPods 3. And just like the leaks and rumors suggested, these are basically the AirPods Pro just without noise cancellation or transparency mode. So we do get spatial audio and a lot of the cool features that were previously, you know, just on the pros, but we get those now on the AirPods 3 and they come in at $179, which I think is a pretty good price. And then we also got the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips. So you get to choose between the M1 Pro or the M1 Max and the rumors were pretty much spot on with these MacBook Pros as well. So we have no touch bar, we have an HDMI slot, an SD card slot, we have MagSafe, so MagSafe chargers are back, and we have three Thunderbolt 4 ports and also a 120 hertz mini LED display. So really awesome redesign for the MacBook Pro. It's basically the perfect MacBook Pro, in my opinion, the perfect MacBook in general. It's really everything I personally ever wanted. So the 14 inch starts at $19.99 and the 16 inch starts at $24.99. So not too bad on the pricing there 
with everything that you get with it. So those are available to pre-order right now and they release next Tuesday on the 26th. And then we did also get new HomePod mini color. So we got orange, yellow, and this really cool navy blue. So those are added in addition to the white and black HomePod minis. And also the OG HomePod was discontinued. It's no longer for sale on Apple. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the RC build of iOS 15.1, along with a quick recap of everything announced at Apple's Unleashed event earlier today. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe so you can see all of the new features included with iOS 15.1. I never like to include all the new features in these RC builds, just so I don't make the same video essentially twice. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.